Hello students, I would be giving a short introduction of another very interesting topic, lasers. You might have heard about lasers, you might be uh, have seen lasers in your labs, in your day-to-day -day life. It has vast variety of applications in medicine, medical, welding, cutting, holography. You might have also heard about laser printing and so on. So these lectures, in these lectures, we will try to address few very important questions. The first question is how laser is different from ordinary light? Then what is the basic principle on which it is based? And then follows the construction of lasers and others. So before starting my lecture, we'll try to see that how laser is different from ordinary light. The first most important difference is that the ordinary light sorry light it is it emits radiation in all the directions whereas laser is directional so the most the first property which distinguishes us from the ordinary light ordinary light is what the tube light bulb we see in our day to day life which we use in our homes office and but laser it is highly directional another important difference in laser light is that it is highly intense because it can deposit greater deal of energy within a very small area so this kind of light is this property of laser can be used in various applications in cutting welding which we where we can use its intensity then it is another important property of laser is that it is coherent the photons or the radiations which are being emitted in the making of laser is coherent whereas the ordinary light is not coherent the waves are not in phase then our ordinary light it covers a full spectrum electromagnetic spectrum it can have it is a combination of many wavelengths whereas in laser it is it has a very narrow range of wavelength so it is almost nearly monochromatic monochromatic and it has very less divergence the extent of divergence is very very less this is almost the same point as directional so these were the few properties of laser which makes it different from the ordinary light now before going to understand what is the basic principle of laser we need to study the different properties or processes occurring in the material when the light is incident on it these processes they occur in the ordinary light also so we will try to see these processes one by one but we in order to make a laser in order to satisfy or in order to get those properties which we have just i mentioned that what we need extra to do we, that we will see so first we will try to see the different processes occurring in the material when light is incident on it so let us take incident on it
ओके लेट अस टेक अ गैस एनक्लोज्ड इन अ वेसल गैस एनक्लोज्ड इन अ वेसल कंटेनिंग फ्री एटम्स एटम्स एंड वाइट लाइट इज इंसिडेंट ऑन इट वाइट लाइट मीन्स विच कंटेन्स अ मिक्सचर ऑफ एवलेंस वाइट लाइट इज incident on it now what happens you all know that the electrons they revolve in the atoms in orbits so when the light is being incident on the atoms then what happen we'll see so the first process which occurs in the material so we'll try to see the names i don't want to give, uh, quote the name here first we'll try to understand what happens and accordingly we'll try to guess what it name should be so now if the atoms are in lower energy level e1 so let us take the two levels e1 which contains n1 number of atoms so n1 is referred as population density and higher level with energy e2 and number of atoms n2 now so these are e1 is the e1 and e2 e1 and e2 are energies of atoms in lower and in lower and higher level respectively n1 n2 are number of atoms n1 n2 number of atoms present in those levels now when i incident light on this that is i incident photons of energy and if the photon has energy equal to the difference between these two levels then the number then the atoms in the lower energy they get they absorb this photon and get excited to higher state so the atoms they absorb photon and get excited to higher levels now this process was being stimulated by photons by the incident light and the absorption of photon occur so the obvious name of this process is stimulated absorption so why is stimulated because it is being stimulated by the incident photon and these photons are absorbed by the atoms to go to the higher state that is why this process is known as stimulated absorption now the probability probability of stimulated absorption depends upon what so this absorption will be more when number of atoms are more in the lower state so it depends upon n1 and it depends upon what is the photon density that how much photons are being incident on these atoms so i label this as which is a function of the frequency of the photon so this is termed as photon density so these are the two factors on which the probability of stimulated absorption depends now atoms are being absorbed to the higher level now what happens when the atoms now the second process when an atom is excited to the higher energy level it cannot stay there long atoms they cannot 
stay long in excited states why in excited states because the lifetime of these atoms in the excited state is very very small and typically is the order of 10 to the minus 8 seconds because the lifetime of these atoms in excited state is very small typically of the order of 10 to the power minus 8 seconds now so what it will do again i will make the energy levels e1 n1 e2 n2 so now the atoms are here in the excited state now because they cannot stay there long so they jump down giving photons of energy which is equal to the difference of these two levels so it will give out photon so now because this process happens by itself we don't need anything to excite this process and it is emitting photons so that is why the name of this process is spontaneous because it is happening by itself spontaneous emission because it is emitting photon so these are the two processes which you all have <laughs> being familiar with and another important thing is that what the probability probability of this process of spontaneous emission depends upon so it will depend upon how many atoms are there in the excited state because they will come down they will determine and under st steady state always the number of atoms is more in the ground state because they always tend to come down to a stable state so these were the two processes which you were being familiar which is happening everywhere there is one more process additional to these two processes so what happens that the photons which are being emitted the photons emitted during spontaneous emission emission they interact interact inter photo interact with nearby atoms through electromagnetic interactions in excited states and due to this interaction what will happen the atoms due to which the atoms in the excited state they tend to come down atoms in excited state drops drop giving or emitting another photon and what is special about this photon which is which is or which has which has same direction frequency phase and polarization 
is the primary photon which one is the primary photon the photon which has ex which has interacted with the atoms and excite them to come down those are known as primary photons and the photons which are now emitted are known as secondary photons so what is this process the photons which are being emitted during the spontaneous emission they go around and these photons which are being emitted in from the spontaneous emission they go around and excite the atoms in the excited states and this interaction makes them to come down and releasing more photons and this photon which is being emitted now is has the same direction frequency phase and polarization as the primary photon so the photons will multiply and these photons have special properties this kind of emission because it is being stimulated by photons and it is helping the atoms to emit more photons that is why this is being termed as stimulated emission this is a process which is responsible for making laser or which is used or which is being exploited to make laser the probability the probability probability of stimulated emission emission depends upon again number of atoms in the excited state and rho nu the photon density so we will see that how stimulated emission helps us to make laser and what all conditions required or in, in addition to this to make a laser this is not only sufficient condition but we require something else we will see and because of this process because this is the basis to make a laser that is why laser is termed as light amplification amplification due to stimulated emission radiation this is the full form of laser so basically we are amplifying light due to this process how we'll see in the next lecture